All right, so now let's get to the 2023 AIME1 problem number five. I actually really kind of like this problem. It didn't seem too terrible, and there was a lot of little interesting connections within it that I thought were kind of enjoyable. Let P be a point on the circle circumscribing square ABCD that satisfies these random two statements. In order to process what this is, we probably better draw something, right? So let's go ahead and draw a circle. Let's see if I can do a pretty good one here. Um, that's not too bad for freehand drawing. Uh, we're gonna put a square inside of it and I'll go like this and like this and up here. Sorry, I gotta block the camera to make it look a little bit more accurate than it otherwise would. Uh, so we've got square A, B, C, D. Let's go A, B, C, and D. And it says P is a point where on this circle? We don't know. And what are you gonna do? You've got this statement P, A times P, C. That kind of reminds me maybe a power of a point might come in or something, but we don't really know. So let's just place it somewhere random. I'll just put it here. Okay, and maybe it won't might quite make sense. I don't really care, actually. We're just gonna try to get an idea of what's going on. If you connect P to A and P to C, you might notice, I wish I could, uh, wish I was on my computer, I could undo that line. <laughs> I need to draw it from straight on or I'm not gonna draw it accurate. Sorry to block your camera view. Okay. So now that it's drawn more accurately, uh, if we do PA to PC, we're saying the product of these two is 56. What's their lengths? We don't know. But that angle looks kind of like 90. Maybe we could establish that it is. Hmm, what would a square, if I drew the diagonal AC, what would that be? Well, the diagonal of that square would be the diameter of the circle, which means that this is 180 degrees and the inscribed angle is 90. Ah, so, and then what about B and D is the other one? So let's think about squares, okay? How are we gonna find the area of a square? Well, the typical way would be that you, you know, find the side length and then you multiply that to get X squared. But we have to remember that a square is an orthodiagonal. And an orthodiagonal, the area of it, all such orthodiagonals, two others of which would be a kite and a rhombus, but there's others that don't fall into either of those categories. Its area is one half diagonal one times diagonal two. And it just so happens that our diagonals of our square are identical and are equivalent to the diameter. So if we could just find what the diameter squared is, that's our area, half the diameter squared. Diameter, diagonal, same thing in this case, right? So now we wanna think a little bit. Okay, well, what are we gonna do? We should try and maybe think about, keep this diagonal and diameter in our mind as we begin to process. There's a statement that I like to write. It's in the small notebook for me, and you should add it to yours if it's not that for triangles, any base times any height equals any other base times any other height. If you watch, I think it's by building mathematical intuition videos, I'll show you some cases where that comes up. I don't remember if it's in there or not, but I think it is. Uh, but basically it's really simple. For right triangles, the product of the legs is the hypotenuse times the height to the hypotenuse. So for instance, let's say I told you you had a 5, 12, 13. I can find the height to the hypotenuse in a second right? It's going to be 60 over 13 because it's the product of the legs over the hypotenuse, right? That's, in other words, if you drew this right triangle, we're talking about this length right here, the height to the hypotenuse from the 90 degree angle. And so again, the base height has to equal base height. Otherwise the areas wouldn't be the same, correct? So then I, you can use that here, I think because we have a product of a base and a height, which reminds me of area, right? And then maybe we could say, well, the diagonal or the diameter of the circle would be the other base and this height right here, which would make 90 degrees with it. 
So it must be true then, if I call that like, let's say I call that height one, height one times the diameter also needs to equal 56. Hmm, okay. Well, what about the other one? Let's draw it over here. And let me try and draw it straight on so I can go here. Uh, that would be if I connect P to D with a straight line. Can I draw straight lines there? It's going to be kind of hard to see a straight line there. Sorry. And then this one here. So then what will happen is, I wish I had a different color. This diagonal BD, when I draw the height to it, we can call that height H2. And it must be that H2 times our diameter BD. Same exact process as the other one. You have a right triangle, the PD and the PB are the legs of that right triangle. Because um, again, diameter 180, cut in half, all that noise. Okay, so now uh, this is gonna be equal to 90. Okay, so now we're still not quite out of the woods. We've got some things that have the diameter in them, maybe if I multiplied them, I would generate a d squared, but I also have a product of h1 and h2. So how are we going to get that? Well, what if we look here? See, what's going on, I'm gonna try and show you from that corner square. Let's just kind of show something here real quick. I'm gonna draw a smaller circle real fast. And from the center of that circle, with the line going across, we've got this action going on. And P being a point here connects here at 90 and here at 90. Well, if you look, this little height right here that we called H1 is right there here. So I could call it H1 also, since it's a rectangle, uh, this kind of opposite sides are going to be equal. Again, we know this is 90. We know the middle angle is 90 because it's an orthodiagonal. And so that means perpendicular diagonals. So then we know the opposite sides are equal. And as this was H2, we can see H2 here. Um, for me, I seen a problem similar to this once. I think maybe an old SAT actually. The old SATs prior to their modification in 2015 actually had a lot of things like AMC 8 on it. And there was something like that I remember from it where you are looking for this diagonal, right? Using maybe say Pythagorean right now, we could say that H1 squared plus H2 squared equals, I'm gonna call that V for value. So that diagonal V for value. But the thing is about a rectangle is that its diagonals are congruent. And if I was to draw this diagonal, it would be the same length as that diagonal. But this diagonal has an additional property. The diagonal of the rectangle that goes from the center of the circle to the point P is actually a radius. And we have a known fact about radii, namely that two of them is the diameter. So then if I divided by two, that little radius would be D over two. And now I would have H1 squared plus H2 squared equals, instead of the V squared, the length R, the R, the radius going this way is the equivalent value. And I could say it's R squared. And in turn, I could now think about what we could do with this. Um, what are we gonna do? Well, what are we looking for again? We're looking for half D squared. I've got H1 with a D, H2 with a D, R with a D. Let's get rid of all the things we don't want and keep the stuff we do. Uh, so H1 squared is going to be, if I divide by D, I would now get 56 squared over D squared plus 90 divided by H2, no, divided by D actually. 90 divided by D, replacing it here, is going to give 90 squared over d squared. And I'm just gonna get rid of this now. Um, I don't know why, I thought it would be easier to show. It looks kind of cluttered here to kind of show what I'm looking at with all those lines. And then r squared is d over two squared, which is d squared over four. Now, immediately some ideas come to mind. Namely, we're looking for d squared, so maybe we could just you know, find that uh, and not have to find d. I think what I want to do though is probably, well, these are, we can just combine these. It would be 56 squared plus 90 squared 
uh, and then it would be over d squared equals d squared over 4. And I guess cross multiply. Um, why are we not doing stuff with this? Why should we? Like, just let it sit. So you're going to get 4 times 56 squared plus 90 squared equals d to the fourth. And we can simply square root the d to the fourth. I'm going to get rid of some stuff here so that we got less noise blocking. Sorry, I don't want to erase stuff, but I'm sure you got it down. So this is going to be d to the fourth. Now, when we square root d to the fourth, we get d squared. So let's do that on the other side. Uh, and if we square root the four, we're going to get two. Um, interesting though. Okay, so we get two pa times pc. Yeah, we're good here. So we're going to get two. And then in the inside, we have the square root of 56 squared plus 90 squared. And this is going to equal d squared. We got to know what that is though. Um, we have some options. Number one, they're both divisible by two. We could make a similar triangle. This would be the hypotenuse of what? The hypotenuse of a 56-90 leg triangle. And we would have to, yeah, do the, find it somehow, I guess. But we could also make a simpler one with like 28 and 45 which may or may not be easier, and then double it back to get what we're looking for. Um, okay, I think I'll use this one and go through with it. So 45 squared is 2025, and 28 squared is uh, 784. You should memorize your first 30 perfect squares just for moments like that. So uh, 784, we've got 27, 2809. This is going to equal, I'm going to run out of space here. I'm going to go over here and use this space. Um, I don't want to write on my knees and the board's just not big enough sometimes for problems. Okay, so we've got 2809 inside of a square root. That's what this is. Again, I'm solving this triangle and I'm going to jump back to this one. Okay, so 2809, we're going to have to think about what approximately it is. So for instance, if I do 50 squared, that's 2500. If this is going to be a nice integer value, and we kind of need it to be to get, uh, you know, the area to be an integer, because we have to suspect if we've done everything right to this point, this must be a perfect square. So we guess something nearby. And then you say, what kind of numbers, what would they end in to be squared and end in 9? And those numbers would be 3 or 7. Uh, so 3 or 7, uh, it's either going to be maybe 53 squared or 57 squared. That one's closer. I don't, we're not that far above 2,500. Um, I mean, for example, if you squared 60, you'd be up at 3,600. So most likely the 57 is going to be closer to this than it is to 2,500, right? And we're still pretty close to that. Let's try 53 squared and see what we get. You're going to get 2,500 plus 3 times 50 times 2, which is 6 times 50, which is 300, plus an additional 9. 2809. It must be that it's 53, and we're simply going to jump back to this space right here, which is 106. Okay, so what did we just find? Uh, we found that the square root of this is 106, and so now we have 2 times 106. That 2 didn't go away, and this is, of course, equal to d squared. But we want, as we said, one half of d squared. And that will knock out the two, and you're gonna get 106. 106 is gonna be your answer. Um, I just like that, I don't know, maybe you didn't have to think of it this way. Maybe there's a way to find just this diagonal by moving just one of them over and keeping the other. And then I didn't have to do the extra drawing, but you know, it is what it is. Six in one, half a dozen in the other, as my dad used to say. Uh, that's going to be the answer. Let's go ahead and do problem six.